Electric cars are now growing up as a segment, but predominantly they have been an alternative source of transport for us because petrol and diesel powered cars have dominated the market for over 100 years now. That being said, there are alternative sources of fuels that we can use. So in this episode of India's EV revolution, let's talk about those alternative fuels and also understand why they haven't worked out as good as electric cars. This is Aurelius from Mashable India and you're watching India's EV revolution. The first type of alternative fuel is called as biofuel and there are two types in it, bioethanol and biodiesel. Bioethanol is produced from sugarcane extracts and corn extracts and biodiesel on the other hand is produced from the remains of vegetable oil and animal fat. Now these fuels have been into existence for quite some time but to produce them on a large scale is a little challenging with respect to the limitations on the infrastructure. But once the infrastructure is in place, these are good fuels to be used as alternative fuels compared to petrol or diesel because these fuels can be used directly with little or no change to the existing petrol or diesel engines. Electricity is also another source of fuel for electric cars and since this segment has been around EVs, I would like to mention this. The first electric car was was made by William Morrison in 1887. It had a four horsepower output from two electric motors, had a range or drivable range of around 40 kilometers and a top speed of around 45 kilometers to the hour. That in itself has been a great achievement more than 150 years ago. And right now we have much more range, much more power output from electric vehicles right now. Most of the electricity that goes into these cars is still produced the conventional way that's by burning diesel or coal. So till we don't switch to an alternative source, which is maybe solar or nuclear power, we can't really call these cars cleaner or greener cars. But then emissions are limited, so in a way, it's still alternative fuel. Let's talk about the next one. The third alternative fuel can be steam. And the first steam-powered car was made in 1769 by Nicholas Cognit. But the steam-powered car did not really pick up is because it needed a large boiler to convert water into water vapor. And there was also a source of heat that was required to convert water into water vapor. And then that steam would then drive the car. But then it was not really practical to have a large boiler because that would effectively increase the weight of the car, also reducing the dynamics of the car. But it was not practical to have a large steam boiler at the front of the car because it would invariably increase the size of the car because the boiler in itself was high and there was an additional source of fuel that was required, maybe coal or diesel, to heat and boil the water in the boiler. So it was not really practical. But why am I really mentioning this when steam powered cars is not something that we'll see? The only reason why I'm mentioning this is because the electric starter that was initially designed for the steam powered car that is what led to the rise of IC cars because they needed a starter to crank up the engine. And that is also the reason why steam powered cars didn't really pick up. The fourth type of alternative fuel could be heat. Now heat is generally generated by petrol and diesel powered cars which is then wasted through exhaust gases. But if you have a thermoelectrical converter installed near the exhaust, this heat can be stored into batteries or could also power an electric motor or an auxiliary electric motor which will help the car just navigate through traffic or even getting the car in and out of parking lots. This will also help your overall mileage of the car. The fifth type of alternative fuel is hydrogen. There are already hydrogen powered cars which are into production. Now these cars break down hydrogen molecules, combine them with oxygen and produce electricity which is then powering the electric motor on the car or also gets stored on the electric batteries which are existing on the car. So it's a very efficient sort of an ecosystem that a hydrogen powered car uses. The only limitation of a hydrogen powered car is that it's extremely expensive. The hydrogen fuel cell is very complicated to produce and very expensive as well. And that's one of the main reasons why this extremely sustainable use of alternative fuel is not that widely spread or favored. The sixth type of alternative fuel and the last one on our list is LPG, also called as liquefied petroleum gas. Now LPG was normally considered as a byproduct of refining crude oil to produce petrol or diesel. If you've seen a refinery, you'd see flames shooting out of the chimney. This was the LPG which was not used. 
Now we have found an effective way of using it and we see a lot of our state transport vehicles and even an auto rickshaw which runs on LPG. There are a lot of consumers who are also installing LPG tanks on their car to run on a cheaper source of fuel also while having petrol as their primary source. So it's a proper alternative fuel to use. However, the cost of LPG is also on a rise because the per barrel cost of fuel globally is also rising. So it's an alternative fuel which produces lesser greenhouse gases but yes, it's also rising in price now. And these are some of the alternative fuel sources that we could use to power our vehicles which have been used in the past which can be perfected for future uses as well. And in case you're wondering why we haven't mentioned solar power is because we don't generate enough solar energy to power the car directly. Like for instance, if you put a solar panel on top, it won't be sufficient enough to power the car and the panels are also heavy which will add to the weight of the car. So it can to some extent charge the cars when it's parked but then it's not going to be that effective. This is Aurelius from Mashable India. This has been another episode of India's EV revolution where we spoke about alternative fuels. In the next episode, let's talk about the cost factor involving an electric car and compare it to an IC car and understand what will be the long run cost where both these vehicles are concerned. Have a good evening ahead.